Welcome to the Energy Upgrade Podcast. Hey, I'm Vanessa, and I'm obsessed with all things health, energy, entrepreneurship, motherhood, and living my best life. I'm here to give you actionable steps in reclaiming your energy and reconnecting with your power. I'm a certified integrated health practitioner and kinesiologist. I spent the past decade with a focus on skin health and age prevention while co-founding a network of medical aesthetic clinics on the west coast of Canada. After healing myself from burnout, mold, heavy metal, and all the things, I'm back to my passion for health optimization, and I'm lucky enough to coach high-achieving women just like you in finding their energy and life force back transforming their life so they can step into the highest version of themselves has energized me and inspired me to bring to life this podcast. Here, I'll talk about detox, lifestyle, mindset, supplements, breathwork, parasites, (laughs) and everything in between. I know you're so busy, so I keep it under 30 minutes. Thank you for being here. Cozy up and let's get started. Your time is now. Your energy is your life force. You want to be able to magnetize your wildest dreams. A liver detox is the fastest way to start healing. You can and you will. Well, hello, my friends, and welcome to the very first episode of the Energy Upgrade. I'm Vanessa, and I am beyond thrilled that you're here on this journey that we're about to embark together. Now, I couldn't start the first episode without talking about the one question or comment I get the most. That's often how my clients start our first consultation, or that's often the first comment they say. And I'm curious to know if you'll relate to this. So often they'll tell me, how? How did I get myself here? They're going to tell me, I'm eating well, I'm exercising, I'm managing my stress, I'm doing all the right things, yet I'm still not feeling like myself. Have you ever asked yourself that question? there's got to be something wrong with me, right? That's what I was thinking. I thought that for a very long time. In fact, I was trapped in that limiting belief for years thinking, okay, this is it. Yeah, it's happening again. There's something off with me. There must be something. And we're always thinking about the worst, right? And maybe you've seen your physician because you're wondering, well, I know I'm not feeling like myself. There's got to be something. And so you're doing all the blood work and you're seeing all the specialists and all the health professionals to be told that there's nothing wrong with you. You're just aging. Have you been told this before? I know I have. And I know when I was told this, it just frustrated me because I knew deep down, I knew deep down I wasn't feeling like myself. And so don't tell me that everything is okay. So today I want to share with you something called the rain barrel effect. And that's something that I always try to introduce my clients to very early on in the process because it does answer so many of these questions and it does give you a little bit more awareness on how the heck did I get myself here? Why am I feeling this off? And so The rain barrel is an analogy that was um, presented by Dr. Stephen Cabral. And if, in fact, you love and you want to dive deeper into this topic, I cannot recommend the book, The Rain Barrel Effect, enough. It is an absolute um, delight to read. It's actually pretty easy to read and it's a quick read as well, but it also will lay down a foundation on how to get better. So if ever you're curious to dive deeper, that's a great book and I'll put it in the show notes, but essentially what the rain barrel is showing. And for me, this was a big aha moment. This explained something that no health professional, and trust me, I've seen them all. Nobody had brought this up to my attention. And nobody told me that maybe that was where the problem was. So let's talk about this rain barrel. So you know what a rain barrel is, right? We keep it outside to collect um, rainwater, and often we'll use that water to um, water our gardens. So imagine that the rain barrel is your body. It's you. And as you are going about with your life, 
you get exposed to toxins. Toxins are invisible. And so therefore, they have an unfair advantage. So it's our job to become more aware of them. But these toxins, they get, they come into our rain barrel slowly, but surely a little bit every day without us even noticing, because of course, they are invisible. And so what these toxins do is they accumulate in the body and they start clogging things up again without us noticing. And so what happens is when our rain barrel starts to overflow, we start to have random symptoms. We'll start having a headache here and there. We're going to start to gain weight. We'll feel bloated most of the time. Then one day we have no energy at all. Our sleep is disrupted. We start having muscle pain and all of these random symptoms that don't make any sense. Have you ever experienced any of these? So if you have, sometimes all it is, is a sign that your rain barrel is overflowing. So again, these toxins is not something that we purposely expose ourselves to. It's just in our environment, right? It's it's everywhere. And so here I am talking about toxins. I, I want to give you an example of what these toxins actually are. And before I go there, I want to preface this. It's really important. I'm not sharing any of this information with you to scare you or even to become paranoid. It's quite the contrary. I believe that knowledge is power. And with knowledge, we can take informed decisions. So all I'm trying to do on this show is enlighten you with some important knowledge that will help you and empower you in making the right actions and decisions for yourself afterwards, right? And also toxins are just, it's in our everyday life now. It's, it's everywhere. So we can't really avoid them. So there's no, um, there's no reason to become paranoid or there's no reason to want to live in a bubble because I don't want that for myself. I know that. And I'm sure you don't want that either, right? I want to continue to live my life and not have to worry about them. So the key is knowing what to do. So I'm going to share with you what these toxins are and where they hide. And then I'll finish by giving you some solutions. Because of course, I'm never here to dump more problems on you. I'm always here to offer solutions and give you hope that yes, you can and you will feel better. Okay, so let's let's dive in. Let's talk about what these toxins that are filling our rain barrel could be. Um, so one category is heavy metals. Heavy metals, um, for example, mercury, aluminum, arsenic, you've heard about this. We know they're not good for us because often it's very difficult for our body to excrete them. So they get stuck in our body. Where do we get heavy metals from? Well, it could be from fish. Um, some like the higher it is in the food chain. So the bigger the fish is, the more chance it has to contain mercury, for example. And so tuna is a good example. Tuna should only be consumed about once a month because it is extremely high in mercury. And this is also true, or even more so true for kids. Um, because imagine the same concentration in a smaller body will have a bigger impact. And in kids, we see often the impact on behaviors. But anyway, that's something for another show. Heavy metals could also be silver fillings. So if you've had dental work, um, especially if it's been it's been quite old, often um, if, if it's like the, the gray fillings that you have, often those have uh, mercury in them. Then we have tap water. Tap water is extremely contaminated um, and we know it has chlorine and fluoride and all the things that we don't want and mercury also. So heavy metal is one toxin. Again, we don't see it and that's that's really unfair. It's invisible and so we don't even know that we're being exposed. Um, but now you kind of know the main sources. Then we have synthetic foods. Synthetic foods are basically just foods that have been basically man-made, created um, like GMO food, artificial sweeteners, any processed food. These foods are not real food. And so the body doesn't quite know what to do with it. And it's creating toxins and waste that gets stuck in the body. Then we move on to pesticides, our friends. And 
the the biggest uh, offender is what we all know, glyphosate. Glyphosate is is an absolute disaster, unfortunately, because it's everywhere now and it's very much so used in every monoculture out there and agriculture. And so we have to be really careful in how we source our pro- our produce in particular. Um, so trying to go for organic whenever you can, um, local and trying to buy from smaller market gardeners is usually the way to go. If budget doesn't allow you to buy organic, which is completely understandable, especially these days, then I always recommend to stick to the dirty dozen list, which basically features the 12 fruits and vegetables that have been shown to retain the highest amount of glyphosate. And so those ones should be prioritized as organic. And if you've never seen this list, you can find it on the ewg.org website, which I will link also in the show notes. Then we move on to tap water. Tap water, Okay, so I want to say this. I'm extremely grateful for tap water. I'm grateful that I live in a part of the world where I do have access to water whenever I need it. That's amazing. But in the context of wanting to heal, feel better, and optimize our health, tap water is unfortunately just not cutting it anymore. We know it is contaminated with fluoride, chlorine, pharmaceuticals that people flush down their toilet, heavy metals farm runoffs, paint, solvents, varnishes that people also flush down the toilet and make their way into the healthy, but supposedly healthy water that we drink. So we have to be very careful about what we put in our body. Water is critical for energy. And if we're drinking the wrong one, it can literally leave us dehydrated and more sick instead of helping us feel better. So be careful about the water that you source. I'll do a separate show on that. But as a rule, filtered um, spring water, spring water is the best. If you can have um, water with osmos, uh, reverse osmosis, but important to have minerals put back in your water. You also have some um, tabletop filter filtration systems like the Berkey, um, the zero water filters. Those are also a good solution. Then we have daily stressors. Again, not something that we would think would be filling up our rain barrel, but it sure does. And it does accumulate in the body, especially stress from day to day life that just builds up, right? Often we don't even have time to sit and process some of the emotions and the stress that we feel. And so they, they get stuck in the body. We also have internal stressors that we also don't see. So perhaps we have a virus such as Epstein-Barr virus or Lyme disease that are that is floating around in our body causing a whole lot of symptoms, yet we can't put our finger on it. Or maybe you have parasites. All of these will create internal stress. So it's like it's this war zone inside of you, yet you don't even know it. So those will also fill up your rain barrel. Then we have electrosmog. So all of these EMFs, so electromagnetic fields that are created from our internet routers, those 5G towers that we get to see everywhere now. And so these will create a magnetic field that will interfere with our own. Remember, our body is electricity. Our body is frequency. And so when we start messing with our own field, we will damage the internal communication between ourselves. And so therefore, it's harder and harder for our body to heal and rejuvenate. And so, of course, that also does fill up our rain barrel. Then we have our indoor hair, air, whether we're at home or in the office, we think, okay, we're good here. There's probably a filtration system or an HVAC system. But the truth is, it's believed that indoor air is a hundred times more contaminated than outside air. And humans, and especially in the industrial world, are spending more than 90% of their time indoors. Right. So when you combine these two things together, that's not good news. Now, how could it be contaminated? Right. Maybe you're asking, where are these toxins coming from? Well, it's coming from building materials, furniture. Unfortunately, the furniture nowadays is cheaper and cheaper, made with glue, formaldehyde, um, MDF, which will off gas for 10 to 15 years. So it's not only when you get it, you know, sometimes there's that strong smell. And that's an indication that there's something wrong with this. 
But often we'll think, okay, well, when it's when it doesn't smell anymore, there's no toxins coming out. But it's unfortunately, again, these invisible toxins are there for decades. Um, paint, mold is a huge problem indoors, especially if you ha you've had any type of leakage or water damage. Often there's something stuck in the walls still. Um, things like air fresheners and scented candles and dryer sheets, all of these will also contaminate and, and pollute your air with the man-made chemicals. Um, and so it's indoor air is, is a biggie. It's a big one when it comes to your rain barrel. Now we have cosmetics, so anything that we put on our skin. Remember, our skin is our largest organ, so it absorbs about 60% of whatever we put on it. And so think about it when you're, it's believed that the average woman will spend, will put about 30 different man-made chemicals just in their mor morning routine alone. And that's from the shampoo you use, the soap, the body lotion, the face cream, the makeup, all of these really add up with synthetic chemicals that your skin will drink up. And then, of course, that will float into your bloodstream and start creating other issues. Again, if you're wondering what, okay, what can I use on my skin, I love the EWG dot org skin database they have all the brands and products that you can type in there and see how safe it is so that's just a little trick there okay two more two more things that are drastically increasing or or filling up your rain barrel pharmaceuticals so pharmaceuticals of any kind do create dysfunctions in the liver. That's 100%. Now, sometimes it's always, you always have to weigh the risk and benefits, right? It's always about that. And so sometimes you do need the pharmaceuticals and sometimes it's for a temporary reason. But when you're using it chronically for a chronic condition and on a long-term basis, it's a good idea to really ask yourself, is this serving me? Is it just masking my symptoms? Is that is it actually healing me? Because remember, the pharmaceuticals is often given to get rid of the symptoms, but it's not addressing the root cause of your problem. So it's a good question to ask yourself. Then lastly, gut bugs. So anything that is going on in your gut that might be disrupting how you're feeling. And so just to give you an, an example, 80% of your immune system lies in your gut. And so if you have a dysbiosis, so a disbalance of an imbalance of bad bacteria, for example, maybe you have a candida overgrowth that could have been triggered by heavy metals pharmaceuticals, by mold, or something from the other toxins that I've listed. Or maybe you have um, H. pylori or parasites, or like I said, mold, candida, yeast, all of these will create this massive imbalance in your gut, which will then impair your immune system. It will affect also your ability to produce your own B vitamins and produce your own hormones. So you can see how this is a massive cascade effect. So I hope this paints a picture and I hope you understand how it's not that you're doing something wrong. In fact, the, thank, thankfully, you're doing all the things you're doing. Otherwise, you would feel so much worse. But it gives you an idea that we're exposed to so many different things that we have very little control over. So what do we do? How do we get better? How do we break this cycle? Well, the first thing is, as you can imagine, now you understand how your rain barrel fills up. The first thing is we got to empty that rain barrel at least by 10 or 20 percent. And how we do that is often I like to have my clients start with a liver detoxification. So a way to really support, accelerate um, the elimination of these trap toxins, getting them out of the body. I always say out with the old, in with the new, creating more space for the new energy, creating more space for healing and rejuvenation to take place. And remember, your body always wants to be in a state of balance. It always is thriving for that. But sometimes when our rain barrel is so full of these different toxins, it's, it's hardly impossible for our body to do anything by itself anymore. And so it does need help. And so I like to use the liver detox as a way to help the body get back on track. And so you can do that for 7, 14, or 21 days, depending on the severity of your symptoms. And then after that, you can start see a difference and you can start being a, more aware of the things I just mentioned. And you can start making decisions, right? So when you empty, let's say, your next skincare cream, your next face cream, 
maybe for the next one, you'll look at the ingredients and maybe you'll be a bit more careful and aware of the brand that you pick. And maybe you won't buy air fresheners anymore. And maybe you'll use essential oils now that you know that that would be a safer option and less toxic. And maybe your next big investment is an air purification system for your bedroom so that when you're sleeping at night, at least you know that for eight hours, you're having clean air to help your body rejuvenate. Again, knowledge is power. And I I hope that today's show didn't traumatize you and didn't scare you. And I hope it was enlightening to understand that rain barrel effect and how we can help the body return to a state of balance, which is where it wants to be at all times. So I think I'm going to leave it at that for today. I think we went pretty deep for our first episode. I hope you're still with me. And I hope that you'll be with me for the second episode, which I'm also very excited about. I will be talking about some signs that your body is actually needing help. Our body's always talking to us. And so sometimes it's just a matter of listening, paying a closer attention. And so I'll share with you some signs that you shouldn't maybe um, not be paying attention to. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. And if you've enjoyed this show, of course, please, please, please share it on your favorite social media platform. Send it to a friend that you think might benefit from this information. And what would mean the, the world to me is if you were kind enough to go put a review on Apple Podcast, so that this podcast can be um, shown to more people. Your help is really tremendous. And in this new journey, I cannot be more grateful for you and for your, your time. And I can't wait to be here again next time. Bye-bye for now. Hey, you, are we pen pals yet? If not, visit my website at vanessagrutman.com and be sure to sign up to my newsletter to be the first to know about my latest tips, favorite products for the family, blog and podcast release. There's a reason why you landed here. Join my community and let's stay connected. The information shared on this podcast is for information purposes only and doesn't provide any medical advice. Vanessa Grutman does not cure, diagnose, or treat disease. Please consult your physician before trying any new protocol or product.